Get over here! Hey boys, I got beats for you. What you got for me? Oh, welcome! <laughs> I forget the I forget the names of these guys, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, ooh, the zebra print looks nice. Uh, what else we got? Eh, some of these are fine, but I, I think the zebra print is what got me. What do you What do you consider completion of this game? Uh, like when you said like I want to try and get everything, does that include buying on the levels? From the shop? Okay, on the levels because okay. buying everything from these guys is gonna take a long time. So how you guys doing? Uh, the Green Scorpion here, and welcome to oh hey guitar. Uh, welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kirby's Epic Yarn. Uh, did I say my name yet? I don't think so. I'm the Green Scorpion. I'm the Comic Foil. Not like not like they don't know who we are anyway at this point. I don't know. Like, maybe. Is there a way that this could have, like, randomly come up on their queue? A lot of people watch these on cell phones now, and they just stream. Mm, you're not wrong, yeah. Speaking of streaming, I gotta get in on that. Um, yeah, let's get the wardrobe. Alright, so I think that'll be good for now. Let's do a little update at our, uh, at, at our resident, uh... Actually, you know, now that I think about it, we should have checked the apartment first. See what we need, because oh, maybe yeah. one of the things we need is going to be... Typically, what we get, what we need in here is gotten from the levels. That would have been the smart thing to do. So, the dinosaur slide, and whatever these are, I think that's an ice cream sundae cup. And that, it looks to me like a bear dressed as a British guard. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's see. Uh, place. Like a Buckingham Palace guard? Okay, so... Not in here. No, that's the camel sofa. Aha! Here yep. we go. The dino, the dino slide. Uh, what else we got? We got okay. Toy tracks. You know what? I think that was at. I think that might have been at a level, and I didn't get it. And there's the other one. So we don't have what we need yet here. Okay. Um. Oh, you know what? Toy. You know what? Uh, this. It's saying that this item is in toy tracks. Yeah. But that's not until we get to treat land. Oh, okay. Okay, so there you go. Um, battery's going, getting low, by the way. Yeah, I might have to stop to get you more batteries. Alright, we'll tackle that when we get there. So, anyway, um, let's go talk to, uh... No, 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 you know what? We can't upgrade the sh We can't upgrade the hotel until after, uh, we, uh, get this apartment done. So, so let's go, guess, let's yeah, go, let's go ahead back to Hotland. Back to the Hotland? Alright, so, Hotland? in the, in the meantime... Oh, that's gonna bother me. Um, do you wanna just go ahead and nip this in the bud now? What are we nipping? The battery thing. Yeah, sure. Th Let's pause that, it. That indication in the bottom of the screen is going to bother me. I was trying to ignore it, but I can't really anymore. Yeah. We'll be right back, guys. All right. We're back. We got batteries now. Okay. So, um... Anyway. I got batteries. You got bat. I had to do everything around here. Well, excuse me. Well, you think just because it's my house and I know where the batteries are, I should be the one to get the batteries? I think you answered your own question. Well, maybe I did. Where are we going? We're, uh, we, uh, did Dusk Dunes. We uh, did, we, we are did going cool to, uh, we, yeah, we did Cool Cave, so we're gonna go up here to Dino Jungle. Where we already got that dino slide when we were playing this before. Yeah, so, we, we don't need to, for some reason, I don't think I collected everything in, uh, the Dusk Dunes, uh, the first time I did it. Probably not. Huh, well, anyway, um, here we go into the Dino Jungle. In the meantime, we got questions to answer. Bum, well, bum, bum. well, I got questions to answer, and you... We'll probably chime in. As well. <laughs> sometimes I just so, decide so, I'm going to answer a question. Yes, people do ask you questions sometimes on yeah, this, sometimes uh, on this uh, series as well. Me. So by all means. Well, your channel, your questions, and this comes from the Vapor the Vaporeon Shadow. All right. Who is your favorite Ruby character and Grim? Also, what semblance would you have? Oh, I actually did think about this with my friend Tony. Okay, first of all, uh, okay, the first one is favorite character. Uh, yes. Jean Arc. I love that guy. Um, those of you who watch the series know, he is basically the underdog, and I like underdog characters, but, uh, he's the kind of character who is, like, uh, unlike everyone else, like, he's the guy who is just, like, Ruby has this, like, crazy sniper rifle scythe, um, uh, Nora has, like, this giant hammer that is infused with lightning. Jean gets by with a sword and shield, and that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. And he can actually, uh... He can actually fuse his sheet. Like his shield is actually his sheath. Like it, it like folds uh, around. Oh, and, okay. Like it folds around. Like he draws his sword and then he takes the sheath and it becomes a shield. Neat. And he can actually combine the two to make a great sword. 
uh, and it's awesome. Oh, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, the thing is, like, he doesn't necessarily have a semblance the way the others do, at least not yet. He, he has his undiscovered, though uh, recently it has been discovered that his semblance is, like, uh, aura transferring or something like that. Like, he can empower someone else's aura by infusing that it with his own. Um, it's a lot like Naruto in that he has, like, Naruto has so much, uh... Ah, jeez. Like, he has so much chakra. He has so much chakra that, uh... It, it's kind of the same way. Jean has so much aura. Okay. Like, his aura is greater than a lot of others. Ah, oh, jeez, I keep messing this up. Uh, okay. Bear with me, guys. You, you need better aura yourself. I'll infuse you with mine. Uh, right. I have not watched Ruby. I really don't have much idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh... So, that was my favorite character. My so, favorite Grim? Wait, you said his name was John Ark? Yes. So, is that a reference to Joan of Ark? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Because they're all, like, they're all pre existing referenced... characters. Yeah, they're right? all. They're... I mean, they're not. They're, they're but based, they they're based on pre existing characters. Like, yeah. uh, uh, Ruby is uh, based off of Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, Weiss is, uh, is uh, based on Snow White. Okay. Um, That's neat. Um, who else? Uh. Another one I really like, and you would like this, actually. Um, Nora Valkyrie is uh, based off of Thor. Neat. Because she uses a hammer, and uh, her semblance is she can absorb lightning to become stronger. Okay. Um, who else? Or what else? Okay. My favorite Grimm? Of, all, of the Grimm that have been introduced so far, my favorite is the Geist. Um, which is basically a ghost that can possess objects. Um, it's really cool. And uh, if I were to have a semblance... Um, I actually thought about this. If I were a character in Ruby, I'd be the character with a spear, and, uh, because, you know, my namesake, and I think my semblance would be, like, Defiance, where I would, uh, be able to shield others, like, take damage for them or things like, something like that. You know, be the Guardian, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Spear of the Gods, uh, spears are typically, uh, synonymous with Guardians and things like that. That's what I would do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty much, uh, what I, that's pretty much my take on, uh, Ruby, and it's, uh, rather ridiculous, if interesting, uh, uh, interesting, uh, concepts. All I ever knew about Ruby was from that death battle that had, uh, that had Oh, uh, Yang, Yang, uh, uh, Yang Xiaolong versus, uh, Tifa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I actually... It, it seems cool, I just never got into it. Yeah, I actually do agree with it. It, it, it. it is a tough series to get into at first, because the first season is just, eh... It's, uh, not high quality. They got they get better as the series progresses, but yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Okay, good question. Um, what next? Okay, well, the Ender Engineer wants to know, have you tried ARMS? If I have so, tried ARMS. Okay, if so, who's your favorite character? Um, I have played ARMS. I definitely enjoy it. My favorite character is Twin Tower. Okay. Um, I like her design for... Both the obvious and not obvious reasons, I'll admit. And also, uh, I guess you could- I guess I'm going to- I guess I'm speaking in terms of, like, her, uh, default skill set. I love the fact that she utilizes ice in her punches. And, uh, I like her ability that she can float in the air. Also, she's one of those characters, like, if, when we em when we eventually do top ten hair wielders, because you know we're gonna do that, <laughs> yeah. Twintel's among there. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Yeah, Twintel's on that list. If we ever get to doing that. <laughs> we have so many ideas for Weapons Month. We, it, could, it, we it, could go on forever. It really is. Um, but, yeah, overall, like, uh, I, I really do like ARMS as a game. Like, it, it's definitely something the fighting game community kind of needed. Um, it's very endearing. It's very fun. Um... And yeah, my favorite character would be Twintel. A second favorite would probably be um, uh, Ninjara. Yeah. Um, mine personally is Rin Rin. Um, is that her name? The the, the uh, Min Min. Min Min. Thank you. You're, Rin Rin's from uh, Map World. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, but no, Min Min. Uh, the uh, the girl with the uh, noodle hair. I want my favorite character to be Bark and Bite, but I'm better with with Min Min. This, this entire level is, like, what I wanted my bedroom to look like when I was little. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were a big fan of dinosaurs when you were a kid, weren't you? I, I went through a dinosaur phase, yeah. I remember you mentioning that. I was so horrified when I learned that pretty much everything we know about dinosaurs from movies is wrong. I, yeah. Alright, so, 
Next question. Next question. Okay, I, I'm not really sure how to approach this one, but I think it'll be interesting. It comes from Magus Andrus, who uh -huh. asks, what do you think makes a good comic relief character? Ooh, that's a good question. I, this is something, this is this sounds like a question that's right up your alley. Yeah, we're gonna have to ruminate on this, but oh, um. Oh yeah, okay, so in my opinion, a good comic relief character knows uh, to be able, knows how to lighten up a uh, dark mood. Like they know how to brighten up the room. Uh, they know how to be funny even, like a lot of the, a lot of the good, a, a lot of good comic relief characters, not just uh, express humor through the ironic sense, but also through the uh, situational sense. Yeah. Like uh, they, they uh, refer to the current situation and refer to it as, hey, this is, hey, this is bad, but it could be worse. And also, they tend to get themselves hurt a lot. Yeah. But a good comic relief character also knows when to turn it off. I, I think like that, the, that was like, the top thing that was coming into my head, was that they don't interfere with the plot. Exactly. They, like, a good comic relief character doesn't interfere with the plot, and they know to take things seriously when the chips are down. As a matter of fact, you want a perfect example? Uh, uh, Ricky from Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. Ricky is a great example of a comic relief yeah, character. Yeah, does not... Do doesn't really bog things down. You don't have to, like, stop for five minutes for them to do a bit. Exactly. Like, like Ricky and the Hirupon in general are just endearing from their mere presence. Um, another really good comic relief character, in my opinion, is, uh... Is... Hot Wings. Yeah. Yeah, and that... <laughs> I, I know I'm not responding to this as much because I've seen this one before, but I do appreciate the name Hot Wings. Absolutely. Uh, also, but, I like how Kirby looks when he's burnt in this game. Yeah, no, That's he's cool. like singed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like another good comic relief character, uh, in my opinion, uh, if you want to, how? Uh, if you want to uh, go into the Phoenix Wright series, um, as much as I don't like him, and I kind of do though, Larry Butts. I actually think Larry Butts is a good comic relief character. I mean, I uh, yeah, I like Larry. I think for one thing, um, uh, you don't like want a Larry, Larry Butts and Dick Gumshoe. You don't want a comic relief character's only thing to be. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, so the the ground is almost lava. You don't want to be that close to the lava. Uh huh. I gotta get on the pillars uh, if I'm going to if if that's gonna be the case. Uh, okay. Whoa. All right, so stay up there, I think. No, he's uh, uh he's charging. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I I'm remembering things here. Um. I guess a comic relief character, one thing is when there's a character who really only exists to be the comic relief, like, they don't have anything else going for them. Like, not every character has to have a backstory, but if it's a, a character who's there who's going to be around a lot and is really just there to make jokes, like, like, Jar Jar Binks, I'm pretty sure, is the most reviled comic relief character. Mm -hmm. Because it's, all he's doing the entire time he's there is... Bogging, bogging down the plot, slowing things down, making annoying noises. Mm -hmm. I do think if it's a character that's annoying, you have to try and... If, if what's funny about a character is supposed to be that they're annoying, the trick is to... The comedy actually should come from the characters who are annoyed by him. You don't want him to be annoyed... Or her. Or her to be annoying to the audience. You want them to be annoying to I am other admit characters. Yeah, loath as I am to admit it, Comic Foil will tell you this. Uh, Sarah from Blazing Sword would be an example of that. See, to me, to me, Sarah works for me because of... Because I find other characters' reactions to her funny. Right. Um, I know that doesn't play for you. But like, like Larry. Not, that's not a entirely thing. for me, no. See, seeing Phoenix and Edgeworth react to Larry—that's where the punchline is. Yeah. Not that Larry said something funny. Um, it's like, it's like uh, Phoenix. Phoenix and Edgeworth are just done with his crap, and it's like they just want to get on with it. Yeah. But it's but it's played out in the in a in a well executed way. But he has a plot reason to be there because usually he's a witness in something, mm -hmm. and you kind of hate the fact that you need something from him. Yeah, and a lot of the a lot of good comic relief also, it it's like a good comic relief character, also gets their relief as you mentioned from how uh, other characters react to them. Yeah, like for example, another character from. Ace Attorney, I guess you could say, Trucy Wright. A lot of the comic relief we get is her interactions with Apollo and Athena. Yeah. 
because like she she just wants to do all these like crazy awesome magic tricks and she wants to be the greatest magician ever and she and she constantly ropes Athena and Apollo into it and they don't want to do it and, and they don't want anything to do with it because they know they're gonna get hurt in most stories characters aren't good on their own characters are good from the relationships they have with one another mm -hmm. I'm just checking out the is this a cutscene no this is uh we okay, oh you so were we, holding we, down right yeah we've officially uh Oh, you know what I just realized? We're not gonna... Uh, I also lost the cutscene to uh, to the opening of Treatland. I forgot there were cutscenes. Yeah, no, there's a cutscene uh, whenever you complete a boss fight. Oh, do you want to, like, throw it in? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in right here, guys. So, uh, here you go. We did it. We got the magic yarn. The magic yarn shimmered and spiraled and swirled high into the sky. The yarn weaved its way into the fabric of the kingdom and stitched two pieces of patch land together. Meanwhile, back in Dreamland, the Waddle Dees were very busy inside Castle DDD. Let's go! Hop, hop, no slacking off! barked King DDD. Just then, the king noticed that one of his Waddle Dees looked a little. Ah, uh, <laughs> strange. That Waddle Dee was actually one of Yin Yarn's creations. <laughs> Soon Dreamland will be wrapped around my knitting needles, Yin Yarn cackled. What sort of plan was he stringing together? All right, so yeah, uh, that happened. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember what the scene was. Me neither, man. So we'll, we'll remember when the episode airs. We are such professionals. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, my computer got oh, I'm, I'm got dead. I'm sorry too. <laughs> but anyway, so here we are in Treatland now, and we're gonna start with this level. From here on, this is genuine now. Th this, like, is, this we haven't done any of this yet. This is new to me entirely. This is new to Oscar for this playthrough. He's played this game before. Yes, so here we go. We're going to Toy Tracks. We gotta look for that soldier thing for the one yeah. hotel room. Um, and I guess, because a character on their own isn't as good as a character that builds relationships with other characters. This is something Joss Whedon really understands in Firefly. This is something that Fire Emblem understands by doing support conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so, if a character's only there to kind of mug to the audience, I think a lot of times they don't work. Um... Maybe with, like, something like Deadpool that could work. But a lot of times I like comic relief characters if their comic relief is in-universe helping the team. Like, if they're the heart or if they're the, like, optimism of the group or something like that. Like Ricky. Like Ricky. Ricky is, you know, the spirit for everybody. You know, he keeps everybody's morale up. Mm -hmm. Especially given the ridiculousness that happens in Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. Or, like, with Sokka a lot of time in Last Airbender, like, he's the butt of all the jokes, but they establish that he has such an important role to the team. Yeah, he's a strategist. Yeah, or, or Bolin and Korra. Yeah, Bolin just happens to know lava bending! An another option is not to make any character the comic relief character and instead spread the jokes thinly over all of your- I KNEW IT WAS A BEAR! <laughs> it's so cute! This guard bear lost his post when he was caught napping on the j- He's unemployed and destitute. He needs I, a home. I want to give him a hug. We'll find a tenant in that apartment to give him a hug. All right, then. So, uh, yeah. No, that was a good question, actually. I, I like questions that make us think like that. I, I bet if I kept thinking about it, I'd have more stuff, but... Yeah, but uh, let's not drag this out any more than, we, than it needs to. So, uh, next question. All right. Uh, coming from Jedi Master Pickle 3. Nice name. What did you think of Fire Emblem Echoes? Shadows of Valencia. All right, I liked Fire Emblem uh, Shadows of Valencia a lot. Um, I think it was a really cool, cool uh, callback. The, the remake overall is just r very faithful to the original. Um, it's, but also uh, like playable. <laughs> yeah, but also playable. Even then though, it's a little, 
how do you say... You can tell it's a remake of a very outdated game. Absolutely. And the I, ga like, the personally, game I like that. Yeah, no, I liked it too. Um, it was a good throwback to how to the Fire Emblems of old. That being said, some of the mechanics were not easy to get used to. Just the absence of the weapon triangle just jarred me, man. Oh. You're getting Cossacked to death. I am, aren't I? Okay, I gotta go up here. At least I got the, uh, at least I got the beads back. Here we go. <laughs> not your best timing. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing terrible right now. Can I get that? I don't think so. Yeah, even though Fire Emblem Echoes Ow. doesn't really have the best mechanics of Fire Emblem, I kind of appreciated that since it's a remake and mm -hmm. one thing I, I wanted to kind of get a feel for what Fire Emblem Gaiden originally was like. Admittedly, there is one thing about uh, Fire Emblem Echoes that almost everyone will agree with. The narrative was handled so unbelievably well. It was kind of a breath of fresh air for me after Fates. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like the like the characters, the like like the characters, the story, the the motivations involving these characters and everything. Just everything about the narrative of Fire Emblem Echoes was done so nicely. It also helped. Like we also we obviously got some of those characters that like just didn't really work out or just, you know, we didn't like. For example, I didn't like the fact that Faye's only defining character trait was the fact that she was in love with Alm. Yeah. Like, that was... Ugh. I didn't like that too there, much. There's but gonna it, be some it, characters that but, aren't as strong as others. I mean, but it was made up for the fact that she is a legitimately useful character, and just other characters in that game were just, like, so well-written. Grey is a great character. Alm, as a, Alm and Celica as protagonists are fantastic. And I like, I like the sound of... Faye, you know, I didn't mind having having her around. I just wish she was a little more deeper, because that's something I partic particularly don't mm -hmm. like. And hey, like, the villains were great. I'm sorry, whoever vo I don't remember who it was, but whoever voiced General Burkut, <laughs> give him a raise. Uh, Burkut. Oh my god, Burkut's voice actor nailed it! Burkut just cannot hold it together. Just... He is seven ti kinds of crazy. Absolutely. But, oh my god, like... Berku like, Berkut's voice actor, I don't know who it was, but give that guy a raise, because just, he was so on point. Well, he's a voice actor, so you, you probably can't give him a raise that he works on gigs and gets paid for gigs. I you know, give but him a, still, like, give, give him an award or something. Just Increase he, his he, rate. He, yes, he, he should get a lot more notoriety just for his performance as Berkut. It was perfect. Perfection, man. What if he's someone really famous and we just don't remember? I uh, I'm tempted to look it up, but uh, do, do you want to do you want to look into this? All right. All right. In, uh, in the me in the other meantime, other thoughts about echoes. Yeah, yeah other points about echoes. It, like overall, it's just really good. The one thing that basically bugs me about it is just like again, a lot of the net, a lot of the mechanics in the game are obviously just dated, and that was easy to tell. This is really cool, by the way. Like it's robots. Um. A lot of the a lot of the battles just kind of become slogs. Not just slogs, but like either like you can also find like ways to like find exploits. I'm sorry, dude. The clerics and their uh, invocability to summon minions that broke the game. I hated the witches. Oh and my god, yes. Anytime you had to battle witches, it was just the worst. That thing. one chapter where you had to fight that main witch in the manor. Oh my god, that chapter can go burn in hell. <laughs> Uh, so do we have his voice actor yet? Yes, um, if I'm, if I followed this correctly, and I believe I did, his name is, uh, let me just check one more time, Ian Sinclair. Ian Sinclair, that name sounds familiar. Um, he's got a lot of anime credits that I don't really recognize. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to scroll down to his video game appearances on Behind the Voice Actor. Yeah. Uh, but he has so many anime appearances. That might be that might be the reason why you like he's just just goodness gracious. Um, like... he's he's Weiss first of all from uh if I'm saying that right from Dragon Ball. Oh Weiss. Weiss. He's Weiss. I guess. No way. That's what it's telling me. Oh wow. Huh. 
I would not have guessed that. He is Burkut. He is Montana from Battleborn. He is Rashid from Street Fighter V. Yeah, there you go. He is uh, Zavid from Dude, Tales of Zestiria. Dude, this Zestiria. is so adorable. Look at this. So, the bear has a boo-boo. Stitch him up. Oh. oh. <laughs> and he gives you candy beads. That That's cute. Nice. All right, so yeah, no, like, no wonder. Like, again, just Burkut's voice actor just nailed it. All right, here we go. Oh, train section. Have we seen this power yet? I don't think we... Oh, you know what? I, okay, here we go. Give me, like... Oh, you can draw the tracks. Mm-hmm. Neat. Well, you know how I love trains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got time for one more question, I believe. Okay, um, I have a... I have a rather grim one here. I'm pretty excited. All right. This comes from Mike Fluff. If you could have the option to see into the future and watch your own death, would you do it? If yes, why? Wait, go ahead, go... Ask that question again? If you could go into the future and watch your own death, would you do it? And why? I I would not. I would not want to watch my own death. Now, is this a scenario where by watching your own death you know what to avoid? Or I is am it not just, sure. Or are you just going to be like the guy in Big Fish and you're g going to always know how you die? See, that's a really good question. Um, Me personally, I would not want to watch my own death. I mean, that sounds really morbid. But it, it's mainly because... What, uh, I'm trying to think I, of a I way guess, to... I guess, I, I guess I'm kind of, like, following the rules of time travel and saying you should not mess with that. I'm very anti-time travel, yeah. I also believe, though, that when you... Like, if it's something in any story where there's a prophecy, I believe that people having knowledge of the prophecy changes the chances of the prophecy coming true. Oh, yeah. I mean, some prophecies are supposed to be like... Oh, I have a car now. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Oh, that's so cute. I love this. Like, um, Oedipus Rex is a self-fulfilling prophecy that, like, because people heard of it and believed it, it became true. Mm -hmm. Or so is Harry Potter. In a way, so is the Star Wars prequels. Um... But yeah, I'm not. I'm not much interested to see how I die. Yeah, no, thank you. Though I have a chosen death of choice. Oh. Yes. Um, if I got to choose how I would die, I would be playing Hamlet in an international tour, and during the final monologue, um, when he's saying his final goodbye to Horatio while he succumbs to poison. I would have a heart attack <laughs> in front of thousands of audience members. That would definitely be a quite the way to go. And there would be this really awkward moment where he's not getting back up. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, that would be poetic. All right, so we got a hammer. Where's this going? Gonna hammer down the hills, I guess. Oh, of course, you had to hammer up these... Mushrooms? I, what? <laughs> they are mushrooms! Okay, I was right, but I don't... I don't think that's how you make mushrooms grow. I don't think so either. I have never... I am not a mycologist, or however you say it, but I don't think that's how you get mushrooms. I don't think so either. No, it's not. If anything that's gonna scare the mushrooms, they're gonna go back <laughs> in. They're like, no, I'm, I don't want any of that. Well, while Kirby contemplates the... His desire to... Oh, uh, yeah, he looks real contemplative. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> feast on mushrooms. We're gonna go ahead and end it off here. Thank you guys for joining us for episode 7, I believe, of Let's Play Kirby's Epic Yarn. I am the Green Scorpion. I'm the Comic Foil. Next time, uh, shrooms. That sounds like a great time. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say no, though. I will not be peer pressured. Kirby Kirby's getting tired just thinking about it. Kirby, I, I, I don't think you can handle the shrooms. Just, no means no. Kirby, no! <laughs> <laughs>
Kirby, you're a terrible influence. <laughs>